afternoon, sunny afternoon in hot Atlanta today. Far cry above Michigan weather. 1969 Dodge Coronet RT convertible. Looking the car over for a prospective out-of-state buyer. If you need service like this, 800-301-3886. I know my phone number. WS27 Larry. WS27, that is a Dodge. Cornet RT27 convertible. Larry is the... 440, uh, 375 horse in 1969. G in the VIN indicating built in uh, St. Louis. Got the trunk open right now. Let's take a peek at that. And no real uh, ills to speak of. Uh, the appearance of consistent uh, sound deadener on both sides. That's a little bit wacky, isn't it? The floor pan, other than a little slight ripple right in there, uh, doesn't show any indications or signs of uh, damage. Wheel tubs are in good shape, both left and right. I had to sneak up there with a flashlight and look at that one. Here along the tail panel, doesn't look like it's uh, been crunched in from the back end. It's got a mat, it's got a cover, that's a reproduction mat, there's an extra antenna. We got a red line spare that's low on air, doesn't match the set, and we have a jack and uh, tools and such. Tail light housings appear to have been uh, restored from the inside and out, and or maybe changed. Deck lid doesn't have any signs of excess uh, decay in the lips. There's still photos to show the prospective buyer all of that. Trunk seal's been changed. <clears throat> Taking a look back here for the rear body number. Oh, look what somebody else did. So it just so happens that four of those digits we were able to witness and match those up to the VIN of the vehicle so we know we know we have what we appear to have as a numbers matching body. Trunk lines line up nice. Nothing, uh, nothing hysterical. Deck lid sits nice and flat. The car's got some polishing scratches. You can probably see them as I'm moving about the place. I don't know how old the paint is. A little bit heavier with orange peel, but reflective quality is still nice. Can you see my uh, bold print? I'm about two and a half feet away from the car right now. So it's got a few flaws. We'll go over them quickly. Here's a dent, probably about the size of a 50 cent piece or bigger once you work it out. The lines and the reflection look pretty good. Color matches nice and consistent all the way around the vehicle. Doors open and close reasonably well. Not much to complain about. I left the magnets hanging and did a digital paint meter all the way across the car. Readings uh, vary as they do many times. 13, 13, 5. Got some higher readings in a couple various locations. Little uh, filler in the overlap seam where the uh, quarter blends together with the rocker, but the wheel lips, wheel arches um, gauged out reasonably well. Everything from 15 to 28. Real quick, this quarter panel on this side doesn't have the, uh, interestingly enough, you can see what appear to be factory spot welds along there. Doesn't have the original little tabs that fold down in place. So I'm sure that the part of this was uh, sectioned, repaired, or changed. But in the back you can see the unitized rail structure looks nice, no tears in those die holes. And the tail panel is nice and straight across. Looks the exact same way on the other side. <clears throat> Eight and three quarter. Appears to be in pretty good shape. There's nothing seeping out on the ground while I'm under the back of the car. Note that the exhaust and the mufflers have both imploded at one point in time. They've exploded from the inside out due to unburned fuel passing through and boom! That's what happens. Uh, structure of the frame rails up ahead of the tires looks just like that. No torn die holes. The leafs are uh, you know minimal in arch. Give me a second. There's some light. We'll recorrect. Yep. Torque boxes are there. They're supposed to be there on a convertible as everybody probably knows. Uh, shocks and bushings were painted over. Backing plates don't look like they're leaking anything. 
and you can see over there let me pause and now I'm over here on the opposing side inner uh, quarter panel uh, splash trunk extension and see the tabs oops and the tabs they fold down into a slot so they're here on one side gone on the other some repair work was likely quick look at the unitized rail structure again probably too much sun in your screen to see that but uh, there we have it a correct style exhaust tips and the uh, gas tank doesn't look like it's really been out and be, been refreshed, but it doesn't look like it's leaking. Don't smell any gas. Bumpers have both been done. Alignment's a little off. Bumper's setting a little bit out. Uh, on this side, away from the body, I got, I got some space here that I don't have on this side. You know, not horrific, but just a small uh, trim issue to note tail light panel has been restored in really nice shape I believe it's been restored cars fairly straight period waves I would say other side presents in about the same fashion doors open and close pretty nice there's an area of paint that got rubbed through right here on uh, kind of on the feature line it actually comes down along here could stand to be touched up there's a very light scratch that starts here, kind of goes up and down. Maybe you can see it all the way up to here. Uh, probably could be buffed and polished out, hard to say. The only real major bubbling I saw, and it's not that major, is down here, low. Little lack of adhesion, so we know we got some filler in that door corner. Gaps look otherwise pretty good. A few other small chips, like this one. And a few little hairline scratches here and there. I'd call it good driver quality paint with some decent reflection. This is a tape on stripe. It's not painted and cleared over. But if someone was looking for a, oh, a two minus three plus driver car, I think that the paint would uh, enter that category without too much judgment. Front bumper fit was real nice. Plating's nice. Grill has been uh, restored. A few small uh, chips here and there. Uh, N96 option on the trim tag. That's an important one. The Ram Charger, you know, air induction uh, hood. Ram Charger, it's called on a Dodge. Not air grabber, but same thing. Some reproduction 15 inch. Magnum uh, wheels. There's a little bit of pitting on two of the wheels. Very, very subtle right here in the in the seam. Hard to even find. Original window surround trim is in pretty good shape. There's a couple dings on the other side I'll point out in a minute. A little stage one pitting and patina on this vent window frame, same as the other. Uh, these belt moldings have never been changed. You can see there's a little chunk out of this one. A little chunk out of the trim of the inside. Chunk missing here. I left this window up to remind me that um, the regulator uh, needs a little love and attention. You've got to roll the window down with one hand and pull it with the other, or pull it up, vice versa. So, uh, otherwise the windows roll up and down as they should. Uh, little chip on top of this door glass, boom, right there, just a little one where it meets the top. And this window's going to need some adjustment. I haven't seen it up against the top yet, but it hangs out over the quarter window. And uh, maybe the quarter window could just come back a little bit. We might be able to monkey with that and get it to fit a little better. Hey, look at that, much better. So the stop's probably got to be adjusted on this one. All the glass on the other side rolls up and down as it should. Windshield's in pretty good shape, but you get bing, 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 bing. Little small stone picks, sand chips, not major rock chips. Most states would be pretty happy and let you go on that one. And then here's the glass on the other side. A few little hairline ice scraper marks in various locations. Um, nothing really horrible. Again, a little chip up there on the other side. A little bit of pitting on the uh, vent window frames, as I had mentioned. Nothing horrible. A couple bings right here in that windshield trim, if you can see that. Something probably got closed in that door. All these moldings could stand to be polished just a little bit, but they don't look horrible. 
and uh, they were all removed prior to the respray. Door handles were removed and new gaskets installed. None of the trim, I think, these uh, original uh, chrome uh, trim uh, faux scoops there are um, pitted just a little bit, but not in bad shape. Extra antenna in the trunk, a little bit of pitting on that, nothing horrible. Okay, there we go, chrome paint, bumpers, and we did the wheels already, BFG radial TAs, lots of tread on those, 60 series 15 inch, no dry cracking seen, so no issues there. I'm underneath the right rocker panel, I meant to turn this on flash mode before I began, just to get us more light, but the daylight's working out pretty well today. I don't think the bottoms of the rockers have ever been uh, painted on. Pinch welds look very um, nice and appropriate. You can tell they've been grabbed on. Let's see if that'll light up. There we go. They were kind of grabbed on here and here because somebody uh, firmed this up and they changed this uh, cross member going all the way across to support the transmission. This has been replaced. You can see where it's been overlapped here and welded. Take a look at that. And it looks good. Don't know why they would have changed that. Because the car is a D32 automatic transmission car, so it isn't like they uh, swapped out a way to mount the tranny that I can see. Had the car up on jacks um, and inside the building and took plenty of still photos for the client who's receiving this report. The clients get these video reports from me and only they can see them for the first week, two or three or whatever until they decide if they're going to buy the car or not and then I launch them um, so that the public can see them. But These floor pans have all original corrugation and uh, drain plugs present. No reason to believe there's any cuts or patches or welds down here. Inner rocker structure looks good and again you can kind of see that that um, cross member is uh, new. It's new. So, and again, there's a better look at the exhaust on the mufflers being imploded. So, oil was a little bit over full. I recommend the dealership change it and uh, make sure that there's no gasoline getting in the oil. Oil smelled pretty good. All right, there we go. Light me back up. Seat bolts. So, the seats have been out of the car. We'll go in the interior and go through that in just a minute. But, underbody, structure wise, let's pull up to the front real quick. Actually, before I go up to the front, that would make me have to get up twice. I don't want to do that. So we went up here and we uh, did a little scraping and rubbing and we discovered the uh, engine stamp pad. Um, numbers correlate to the VIN on this vehicle and the um, grinder marks in the pad kind of sweep up into the rear. I'm going to compare that with some other photos I've got just to verify and authenticate that that's the way they should look. Uh, automatic 727 torque flight. I'm going to twist my phone. There's the pad. And it is marked nice and clean, although it's not. There we go. It's in focus now. With the VIN, doesn't look like it's been stamped over. The case doesn't look ground down or fraudulent. Uh, up front, the uh, subframe does not look like it's been removed from the vehicle. I could be wrong tie rod ends. Come on, light up on me. Everything looks a little bit worn and aged, including the uh, sway bar bushings and the upper uh, ball joints. A little bit, you know, the boots are stretched. and uh, Frame rails look pleasant. No buckles before or after the, uh, the suspension mount points. Here's a quick look with the tire rolled out. Backing plates are in uh, reasonably nice shape. A little bit of grease build up. They haven't been cleaned up. The car really hasn't gone through an audacious cleanup, just uh, kind of presented as a casual, fun driver. Unitized rails, again, die holes look great. Bumper brackets, none of this looks like it's been um, changed or removed or recently replaced. Little bit of uh, rear main seepage, just a little bit coming down. You see nothing on the ground here. There was a small gathering of transmission fluid drops on the ground when I pulled the car out. And there's drips on the transmission um, pan bolts. Again, the rail structure looks uh, symmetrically nice, just like that on both sides. And uh, inner wheel houses look good. Shining into the sun. I don't know how this is going to look for the observers, but the bottom of the uh, core support 
Oh, that looks horrible. Trust me, it looks good, it looks straight. I'll uh, cover the engine bay and then the interior last. Here's a quick look at a chart I put together for the prospective buyer. Just kind of pointing out the body deficiencies, where the magnet might be a little weak, and the general flaws. But looking the car over, this exploded view looks a little worse. This can be, you know, you guys can freeze frame this and look it over. I uh, took a cold engine temperature on it when I uh, pulled it out of the garage. It's 84 right now. It was 73 degrees when I pulled it out. And it's probably about 65, 70 degrees out down here today in Atlanta. Um, lost my train of thought. Well, oh yeah, back on the train. So up here, the upper tie bar slash core support, it looks nice. I don't see that it's been uh, carved or cut into. And back here on the back side, we had a nice, we had a nice easy read. Uh, probably not showing up on the video, but there we have a uh, a correct VIN for the vehicle. Fender tag in nice shape. Got some pretty cool important uh, options. Uh, N96. That's our air grabber hood or our uh, uh, fresh air ram charger rather. Uh, N85, I think that's the tachometer. A01 is the uh, lighting group, courtesy lights. I think that includes wood grain trim. Uh, optional door buzzer, I think, in 69. And this car doesn't have a door buzzer. At least it doesn't work when you open the door, so maybe it didn't have it. Um, what else we got here? D32 automatic, E86. There's our, oops, I'm not pointing at the tag. There's our biggie, our 375 horse uh, 440. WS27, obviously a convertible uh, Cornette RT, and um, um, R6, R6 Scorch Red, C30 build date, that would put us in uh, December 30th, 1968, early car. Uh, speaking of which, the engine cast was very difficult to see due to the coiled up heat riser on the exhaust. It was either uh, 6868 or 8 excuse me, 6568 or 8568, so it was a June or an uh, August cast block. And uh, that'd be okay for a December build car. I think we're, we're looking okay there. Um, rubbers, got the original uh, staples holding the uh, core support rubber in place. No real sheet metal damage to speak of up here in the aprons. These fenders look nice and uh, uh, fairly congruent there. We got a little bit of a gap right in there But uh, the uh, bottom rails don't really give us any indication That there was a big issue there Feel free to comment on that Mopar guys. I think that looks good. I think that looks normal inner fenders are really structurally sound Brake pedal uh, wear looks pretty consistent with the miles showing on the vehicle Brake light uh, system light goes on. The tachometer does work. Clock does not. You can hear a little bit of an exhaust leak coming out of the manifold or the uh, heat riser, perhaps. I'm not really sure. Antifreeze was uh, uh, fairly clean. Oil was fairly clean and a little high on level. Transmission fluid did not smell burnt. It sounds like our leak is more over there. Uh, stock style ignition components. We do have an electronic upgrade. Didn't see any uh, real active upper engine leaks. A little bit of paint peel on the motor. Wiring appears to be in uh, tidy, tidy shape. with just a little bit of an ignition miss right there. But uh, not nothing too substantial. Car's not really warmed up yet. And we're not witnessing any smoke. I'm not witnessing any smoke. 
So we'll run through the interior. Uh, these upper trim panels and the door panels have both been repainted in gloss black, touched up a little, little bit of uh, wear there. That seat cover baffles me. You can see that it's a little loose uh, from some foam uh, degeneration. I do believe the insert in that seat cover is OEM based on the stitching. And I'm kind of thinking the upper grain, these seat covers might have been partially restored. I don't know. Tough telling those, those uh, nylon straps and the belts have faded to blue from the black dye. The original trim panels here are in pretty good shape. There's some patina slash pitting, you know, uh, cracking on that uh, chrome trim. Same with the handles. But the panels are in pretty good shape. Ashtrays have a little bit of rust on the tops of them. Carpet kit has been changed. Driver's seat moves forward and backward and uh, tips. Seat back needs to be uh, further attached. You can see some dust coming out of there with some deteriorating foam is what I would imagine hitting on the back of the console trim. Console is a nice survivor piece, but we do have some uh, foam dust gathering. The knob on the other side of the uh, seat uh, return is missing, and again, the seat doesn't move. So carpet kit, these sill plates look like they're probably decent originals, that's my guess. Tape line here in the door jam, where they uh, did the jams first, you can kind of see the division line there. Not super, super, over the top show work in the jams, just presentable, appropriate. Uh, brake pedal wear on that corner. It's a pretty original piece, I would say, and it's kind of worn through, but I don't know, about 175,000 miles. It was easier to roll them back in the day. You can see the trim, the plastic chrome trim on those courtesy lights is worn, but the lights work. Door panels uh, present nice, again, some chips in the upper trim components. Door corners are in nice shape. They bagged and tested out well, pretty good, except for one of them. A little bit of warpage here in the door card. This one is a bit worse, but presentable. Upper door uh, tops have been painted. I'm not going to shine you into the sunshine there. Heater controls uh, are operational. We got to jiggle the fan switch and give it a little love to make it work on the high speed, but it will work on the high speed. Uh, defroster switches over as it should. Knob on the shifter has been uh, repainted in almost like a grayish brown, kind of restored and kind of to match the steering wheel, which is kind of a grayish as opposed to a wood green, but it doesn't have any cracks. Some uh, p p patina and p p p p p p p p pitting. That was a joke from a fish named Wanda. Anybody who watched that movie? Okay, all pressure at idle is a nice, about 40, 50, about 50 pounds on the gauge. Alternator, she'd be charging. Temp's starting to come up on this gauge, so we're gonna trust that it's working. And the tack is bouncing. I'm gonna take it through a drive in the parking lot in a minute. I did not get the AM radio to buzz uh, when I was inside, but again, we were inside a steel building down here in Atlanta. Glove box does open and close. There's a new liner and the courtesy light works in there. Uh, the glove box does have to be fudged with a little bit to get the thing to latch and hold, but it does. Wood grain, as you can see, is nice, but you see some chips in the paint. And the console door is a little funky. It does open and close, but when we go to close it, it's kind of overlapping there. So we got to pull it back and then stick it down, and we're good. These seat covers um, don't have much wear. And based on the grain and the pattern and the cushion, I feel like they're original components, which is another reason that leads me to believe the car might have low miles. Ashtray looks good. Down below our vents, uh, both open and close as they uh, should. That one's a little stiff. Quick look up underneath the dash, although it's fairly dark. Nothing really looks to have been altered there. Small hole and a plug going into the firewall. Don't know what was coming through there before, but there's nothing coming through there now. And this seat pad is kind of broke down coming in. The seat's got a little bit of a lean to it. So if you like to lean when you drive, it's going to be perfect. Otherwise, that seat might uh, could stand to be refluffed, reloved. That stitching looks, um, whoops. Give me a better light there. That stitching looks original to me. The grain looks original. So dash pad's in nice shape. Dash steel top is in nice shape. A little bit of paint peel and etc. on the 
uh, bezel. You can see the age in the gauge faces. Part of the rally uh, cluster was 150 mile an hour speedometer in the gauge set. I think that was the um, A62 option on the trim tag was the rally gauge cluster. The A01 was the courtesy lights, I believe. Horn works, turn signals work, backup lights work, emergency flashers, that uh, circuit was a bit wonky, didn't get them to flash. Headlights and bright lights work. Uh, marker lights on the side were optional, uh, you know, they weren't optional, rather they were reflectors, they weren't really uh, lights. Okay, let's drive this thing. I gotta go get one of the bosses here and then uh, we're gonna let it keep idling and warming up so we can take a look and see if anything's, you know, coming out of it. Been running here for about Probably 15 minutes now. I've paused my camera several times. Uh, nothing, nothing too alarming. Hopped in. I'm going to run the car around the building. Uh, we got a long way to uh, run through here. It's a consignment car, so they're not allowed out on the road. There's first to second. There's second to third, we dropped in. It's a manual brake car, I got my hands off the wheel. And uh, e-brake. Let's see here. E-brake's not coming up, let me pull it up with my foot. There we go. Oh, look at that, magically that light went off. Okay, that was helpful. Tachometer appears to be working and uh, maybe registering just a little high, but these things probably need to be calibrated. Speedometer is registering and so is the odometer, trip odometer. I mentioned earlier the horn's working, the radio is not. The heater, blower motor, and fan controls are working. Turn signals are working. Brake lights, reverse lights, headlights, bright lights, all working. The uh, seller has agreed to let me take it in the back parking lot and do about 17 burnouts with it. And I, Rob, I really appreciate that. Only if you can drift. <laughs> can you drift? Uh, I can try. See if your seatbelt works. <laughs> we got the car good and warmed up. Looks like the gas gauge uh, might be working as well. That's a bonus. And the last thing I'm going to do is run the power top up and down before we, uh, uh, before we shut down the video. Oh yeah. That's okay. You can okay. Turn around. Alright, we'll give it one little stomp here. We're gonna hope the brakes work again. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> again, I'm gonna stop by the brake pedal and uh, it's hard to tell because we're not really in an even parking lot, but there's no heavy darting or pulling. The brake pedal's nice and high in the in the range. There's not really a flat spot in the acceleration, it's right there. And uh, we could open up the fresh air for the carb. Maybe do one more little hit. All right, fresh air, go. It's about 45. It's braking nicely. And even though the front suspension's not rebuilt, it seems to be steering just fine. All right, we're gonna pull it back in the building and wrap it up. I didn't get the tires to turn loose, but maybe he will. Well, Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise, thanks for watching. This is a pre-purchase inspection done for a prospective buyer out of state who wanted a good look at this car. I think we could took a good look at it. It's a uh, pretty good looking scorch red. Um, RT. Hey, Andy. hey, the guy looks good in there. Saying hello to Andy. It's got aftermarket reproduction, 15 inch wheels. Um, it's got a nice reflective quality. The paint flaws uh, aren't substantial, but there are some present. Uh, we discussed trim conditions, bumper fit, uh, quality of paint. We looked through the trunk and the underbody. Oh, the power top. We got to run that down. While we're finishing uh, unbuttoning the top here, another quick look at the interior overall. I don't feel like I focused much in the video on this. 
these original uh, pieces. Sometimes you don't see those in reproduction seat covers, which is another reason I'm guessing that's an OEM cover, not to mention the fact that it's a little bit uh, flat. Uh, steering column, a little bit of original paint wear, some patina, as they say. Visors look to be, you know, original as well. This little piece of plastic insert can be replaced. A little bit of uh, surface rust up there. We're running that top and not having success with it going up. It's just moving a little bit, but uh, the motor is engaging both forward and backward, and that's pulling it back down. I'll see if it just needed a little more priming. Well, that's going to need some service. So on the top, the motor is engaging both forward and backwards, just to recap there. And uh, it's probably low on fluid or maybe got a line disconnected or something. Yeah, it worked. Did it work before? Yeah. Well, you know, I showed up, so that's what happens, yeah. right? I didn't mention earlier, I didn't have to look it up on the fender tag. I can't remember what that six-way, uh, six-position adjustable seat, but I believe that is the option for that. It brings it back up. Also, I don't think I mentioned that the main rubber seals on the doors and the trunk have been changed. These uh, rubber seals on the top do appear to be aged and or original. A little bit of pitting here to speak of. Boot cover is in nice shape and I was reported to me that the convertible top itself is in nice shape. Though we'll have to look at some pictures of that because uh, it's not going up. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. We just pulled it up manually just to get a little bit of a look at it. And uh, there it is, that's a little bit of a look. So recapping a little bit of an exhaust leak up front. A mild bumper alignment, a little ding, hairline scratched, could probably be wheeled out. Minimal use of filler, no real collision damage to speak of. Ram charger hood that I believe is functional. And original glass, original interior. Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise, thanks for hanging out.